progress. Got some zinc stuff back, so uh, I hope you remember where all that goes. And um, engine's more or less back up together. Can't really finish it off because the push rod tubes and the have to go off for chroming so we can't really do the top of that until but at least we've got the tank back now so all the chrome stuff can go off we've had the knock the dents out of here we've left that dent there because it's not important because we are painting that that's a painted panel so how you get the dents out of the tank you cut a hole in the bottom so you can get in to knock the dents out at the top uh, so as you see that'll all Polish up, chrome up, great. We've got all the paint stuff back. Um, this is all powder coated. We're now sort of gonna pop the frame together. I hope you remember where all these bits go. Bit daunting, but if you think about it methodically, um, it isn't so drastic. That's the label you put on that sprocket spacer so you stick that on there so that whenever the wheels come back from being rebuilt at central wheel you don't forget to put that spacer on when you get into sort of zinc lots like this here um you can simplify the job a bit but you know that's kickstart that's the magneto that's the head steadier these are footrest bolts which are agricultural things so you can eliminate all the nuts with that very coarse thread in them so you can uh, get the stock down a bit as it were uh, if you're a bit nervous so first of all we will dress up the head races um, before we put them in the frame uh, these are the head races here. Um, as you see, they're all pretty dog-eared. So what I do, see a little box there, carborundum stone. So if you stick that in there, make sure it's nice and square. Bit of light on the jaw. See if it's true. It's not too bad. So you get the carborundum stone is used to sharpen tools and so forth. A little bit of lubricant and a few. Coming on quite nicely. We need to give it another touch. See how nice and clean it is now. That's all, all ready to go. So. So what we do, I like, I like to do, these are the other races that we have cleaned up. I like to sharpen up the bottoms of them so that they sit nice and push in the frame. Often you get bits and pieces on the bottom of them so I generally like to stick them on the finisher. So you get them nice and clean and flat. I did notice one that's um, a bit suspect. Um, that one there is not very nice at the bottom, so I really have to give that another touch because it's not quite flat enough. Right, we'll move on to swinging arm. So we're putting that together. We've got new Timken races. Um, it's always advisable just to double check these are the, that's the old one that came out. You remember we had trouble getting that out, so you just check that out. 44.4, and then you check the new one and it's crack on. You, what you don't want to do is just blindly try and push them in and then all of a sudden you find they don't fit. So these go in here. We've had these covers um, zinc. Nice job. So what we're going to do now, push these um, Timken bearings in here, either side, and we're just going to use a little bit of a tool if I can find the bits. Um, I'm going to stick that in there like that. 
you can see where it's what's coming i'm going to put that in there like that and i'm going to put that on there like that and i'm going to put that on like that and then i'm going to be able to put, pull them together but what i'm going to do is just put a top a, a touch of green lock tight on them so because you don't want those dropping out so we put a touch of that on each one Just a little touch around there. Come on, that's. We'll never have to take them out again. Probably 70 years since they're out the last time. So we just put a touch of green Loctite on there, which um, is a lovely hard lock seal. Right, that's that done. And we are going to tighten that up there to push that in there. Right, so I'm ready to tighten it up now. Just double check that it's uh, pulling nice and straight. And theoretically, that should pull it in nice and square. Right, that's them in. Nice and square and tight. Simple little tool, but um, can um, save a lot of Agro, you can see I put the new grease nipples in there. It's always better to put them in. See, they're nicely in the home there. So we're ready to slip the Timken bearings in, which are these ones here. They pop in there, there. And they that one pops in there. And then you've got your dust covers that go on here and adjusters, because that turns on there like that. So that's how you adjust it. And then you've got to shim it up. So you pop that on there like that. You pop that there on like that. So you're pretty well shaped up to slip the swinging arm in situ. So that comes through there like that. I just pull that back a touch there. That should sit on there nicely. I feed this through here. Right, so you got that in there. Right, so that works nicely like that. So that's the swing it on. So uh, this is the top member. You remember we marked these here. So you put that with your bit of tape on there. Swing it on, spindle. Right, so you know you've got the right one in. We made um, these are new shims here. These were somebody had put in before but they were pretty rubbishy old things so we've gone to our stores and got some nice shims so we'll pop that in there like that bit of grease in the spindle bit of grease in there we'll give them a shot of grease later um, so this one pops through here all being well Got to get me shim in there. There you go. There you go, straight through. So that operates there like that. So we've got to hook that up on the back here. There was those special bolts, if you remember. Uh, string bolts, one there. That looks like number two. Strangely enough, it fits. So. I'll just pop that in there like that to start it. So then we have a look at the damper that you remember fitted on the side here. I've cleaned the powder coat off there because you've got friction dampers on there and friction dampers don't like enamel paint. So the original discs are all worn out and nasty. So what we've got is blank discs. So on the lathe, drill a hole, machine the outside, Hey presto, lovely new disc. So that pops on there like that. That pops on there like that. No, it doesn't. That looks better there. Uh, we've got our drawings, our photographs. Of, um, you get a bit mystified where it goes, but luckily I can remember. So you have another disc to go on there. That pops through here onto there. 
and um, then we've got the star washer to go on there and the adjusting nut so that's the damper system on the back end that's for the seat if you're a member of the seat um, where's the seat brackets there if you remember those uh, you made those up a while ago they are the support for the seats you forgot about that haven't you but that's for the seat job um, front fork so we'll move forward a little bit and have a look at the I'll just leave all that because that's I've got the springs, which is a problem because they've got to go off um, to get chrome plated. But um, to speed the job along, speed the job along. What I'll do, I'll just make uh, blanks up so they can assemble the whole back end and then drop drop those springs on whenever they come back from plating. So that's the back end more or less sorted out. Um, I'll all come up. Paint works very nice. Um, come up pretty good. Right, we'll look at the uh, head races. We had one on the lathe in a minute when we faced them up. Luckily we've got quarter balls here, so um, it's just nice to, to double check them to see if everything's... See, that's nice, nice fit there, you know. That's um, the, the bottom yoke. So we've got to get one of those on there. We'll just have a think about that. You need to be careful because often there's different, the top and the bottom are different size. So we better put it, check them out for um, dimension. See if they're all the same. I'll, I'll go all language because it was an imperial rather than metric. Inch and a sixteenth. Right, so. We're up to speed there. I'll drop that on in a moment. And um, I popped the spindle in there because it was marked and I didn't want to lose it. This is the, we've got to get a race in there too. One race drops in there. So we'll have to double check that, push that in, green Loctite again. So that will drop on there. This will go up through here. Um, so the races will go in there. That will go up through there. That'll pop on there like that. And uh, hey, it needs just easing off a bit because that should be a nice fit. And you don't want that to be a, a struggle to. So I just give that a, a little bit of a linny shot there because it's too tight for comfort. And I just give that a touch. Um, how you do that there then, if you get a nice little, um, bush cleaner right that looks about right there that's slightly bigger that one's a better job so we we'll stick that in there like that i might as well do it on the drill rather than do it on the electric drill right so we'll pop that in there so that's it all neat and tidy Theoretically, that should be a nicer fit now than that. There you go. A lot better, so that's not such a force, you know. Could just do a maybe a little touch off that. Often what happens, the clamp chews into that, because that's a clamp to tighten it up, and that pulls in it, chews up the metal. See, it's going on much, much neater now. So we'll stick that in there, we'll put the cups in later, that's the actually start of there. Um, and then the forks, they're being, they're not back from the planers yet, so we'll drop the forks in later. Um, and then we're going to just drop the engine in and let you see the engine going in. That was a bit tight there, often you find, you see on there, there's a little burr on the thread. So to, to undo that before you start trying to put it together, if you get a little file there and just gently take off the burr where it's got damage in the plating you see that should be back on there nice nice and neat now there you go just you see all the difference just the touch on the thread 
and the nut slips on. So Jan's going to give us a hand to lift the engine in. Those are the two nuts for, I might just screw that one down there. And then <clears throat> if it is tight, I'll use that as a, because you always want nice, just the, <clears throat> the stud just coming through the, the nut like that. So it makes a nice job. <clears throat> True sign of an amateur if you get bloody bolts sticking right through like that. So, so we'll have these two in line in case Jick, it won't fit easy. I can pop those through while I get myself sorted out. Just check the length, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to take that out, right? And chase it. Go to the top. So we're going to set the engine in, and the most critical bit we've got to watch is this bottom bit here, where I've got to get the bottom engine plates over the top and get that foot rest job through. So tricky situation. Um, generally, I put protection on the frame in case it gets beat up. So we just put it. Basic like that. Okay, yeah, so we're going to lift the engine. Um, we'll take the rocker bottle off, off so that will give us more room. So Jan's going to lift it in. He's coming in from this side. So we're in the side, Jan. So just try. We may have to take one of those engine plates off. Maybe not. Just forward touch. The bottom into the frame, big step forward, um, that's the head steadier, we put that in and um, clean, that's where the mag is going on there, we've got the back engine plate to sort out, we've got to clean that up and drop that in there and um, that's your rear mount, is there. that pops in there like that so bit of a cut away for the frame. So, coming on well, engine's all happy. Um, so, back end together, um, engine and frame. These are the monstrous footrests that we spoke about. They go on the bottom of that there, so they stick out like here. So, um, got that shaped up. So, there we go. That's a big step forward. Um, and um, then, of course, when we get the wheels in the bike, um, take it over to TJ Tubes over at uh, Upton, Bournemouth. They'll bend us a set of exhaust pipes. Armors are making silencers for us, so that, that's all in progress. Um, brake shoes are off for relining, so when they come back, I can um, get the brake plate. What you're gonna do now is machine Machine the, this here so that um, you get a nice fit. So we'll pop that in the lathe. So that's the brick plate in there. When you're doing it, you need a stop. So luckily the brick cam is the stop on, to stop it flying around in the uh, lathe. So we give it a nip up there. We need to speed. Not too quick. I'll probably go to about 190 or something on here. So there we go. You've got to get back in, right inside there to do all the lining. So uh, make sure we check that that clears the bed. So off you go.
bit off there, so I'll just double check it. On the brake drill. If you, you can do it, this I took 25 five off it, so there you go. Perfect fit. I think we might have to take a little bit of paint off there because it's tight in the brake paint, so that's how you do that. That's the space that you weren't going to lose. You remember? You can feel the paint slightly on there, so what I'll do, I'll stick that on the lane and just take a whisker off there. Right, I've got the engine in now. I'm going to pop this um, front engine bolt in here, but um, I see it's too long. And I don't believe it because I've marked on here. There's what I was stamped on it, front bottom on there. So I'm not losing the plot. There must be something wrong here. That's too long. But if you remember, you've probably forgotten, there was exhaust brackets on here. So they are probably among this lot somewhere. Exhaust brackets. So they, that will make up the distance. We need to take a whisk out them, they're a bit tight. Just a bit of build up of the um, powder coat. So theoretically that should make up the difference on the belt, like that, and that pops through it like that, little mallet, pops through a tree, and hey Gusto Miller is the right, right length of bolt, so that was a bit of luck, um, just because I marked it. We can press on, so I'll that's all ready to assemble races and bearings straight together and we'll pop that in sometime later. Looking at the tank because it's gone off for plating, we've had the dent knocked out of the side and um, Miller was having a look at it with the old knee pads and he wasn't too impressed. So um, as you can see, not very pretty. Can't even find a way. I think that works for that, for that side. So it don't look nice, you see. So then we go back to the original photographs when we had it. Um, then when you look at those, not very clear, but not very nice. So we'll look at the original specification. This is the, the one that we're, the Deluxe model 46 DL that's a nice blue on the tank so that will make a nice uh, color but if you see the shape of the knee pad there it, it's very much different to the one that was on it so we've got our knee pad box out to have a look what's happening you could write a story on this lot here so this one here right why is it like that TT writer George Dance designed those because in the TT, when you were firing around the circuit, you needed to have that locked into your knee so you could hold on to the thing. So if you can imagine, that's how you locked your knee into the side of the bike so you could control the bloody thing when it was getting out of hand, down below and the bridge and so forth. Another early pad that I just had a look at. You see this one here? That's about 1905, I would think, because that was when they strapped it to the side of the tank, like, and instead of bolting on, they just put straps on it and pulled it onto the tank like that. So that's very old. Um, probably, definitely, 1910, 9th, somewhere about that period when 
they tied toolboxes onto the top of the tank and they tied knee pads on. What other knee pads have we got? We've got Triumphs there, uh, Villa sets. You know, all the manufacturers put their name on the side of knee pads. Probably all boring stuff to you. Then you get the famous John Bull who made tires and all sorts of rubber stuff. That one there's a matchless one. So multi-coated shapes, but I've decided um, out of the box of tricks that this one here, there's no name on it, but it's a firm Jim Hunter uh, up in Hall Green, Birmingham. Uh, magic company, Steve runs it now, and uh, quite a good turbine. They make all rubber stuff, so I'm just gonna pop that on like that. And you can see that looks an awful lot more respectable. Nice panel, nice that. Very, very, very similar to the original sales brochure. That looks terrible, so luckily enough, Miller got that sorted out. So the chrome guy will have to come around here, a bit of chrome down here. Chrome around there, nice panel on there, the nice blue, and hey presto, off we go. Got a new fitter cap for it there, so I'll have to pop on that, because the old one's all, you don't, you don't mess about with those because it wastes of time, but it's very important that you get an early, you see that serration around there, that's very old, whereas all the modern ones are just smooth, that's too difficult to do now, but luckily we've got an original research those serrations were on the side, so very, very period, very upright. And um, so that's where we've got to, to present and um, onward and forward, we'll drop the yokes into that. And um, this will all go off for chrome on Monday. And then we'll hang all the carburetor bits together again. Uh, and that's all pretty straightforward stuff, you know. Clean all this up, that pops in there like that. You got the ring, the, I've got a new um, bell mouth for it. That will look pretty, pretty. Um, a slide drops in here. It's got a lot of wear on it, but we can dress that up. And um, that's the top for it. Um, that's the top of the carburetor float bowl, which is over here. So <clears throat> that'll, I won't bother plating that, it's just out of the stores. It's, it's quite handy. We've got a float bowl that pops in here with a needle that comes up through the bottom, like that. We'll grind that in so it's all nice and a good seal. Uh, air slide, we'll get that cleaned up, checked out. That pops up and down here so <clears throat> restricts the airflow and you get a richer mixture for when for easy starting so lucky to get a new bell mouth out of the stores a lot less work to do this was the old float bowl here as you can see had a hard life uh, beat up the tops all beat up and a bit of corrosion there almost gone through so we'll supersede that but when you're doing Finding those, if you're out right, all the jumbles and stuff, you gotta be super careful that you get the right one because there are a multitude of angles like that. Multitude of angles. That's a 70 degree one, so that's quite handy. But make sure that if you're replacing it, you get them right because if you've got the old float bowl cocked to one side, you ain't gonna do any good. You're in the workshop now, so this is what I've got on the workshop. Just another day in paradise. Another day in paradise. You wouldn't exchange it for anything. You gotta run.